Hello, Anting Vlog. Welcome back to episode uh, nine, I think. I, I am honestly losing track at this point, but um, we're out here on Mount Graham. This is um, a very large, prominent mountain in eastern Arizona. Um, and the reason why I'm here mostly is because it's very understudied for ants. Like, pretty much no records for ants out here. Um, and so basically anything we find is going to be quote-unquote new. Now, I have an idea of what's going to be out here, and I've already found some ants that I was expecting to find out here. Um, but if we find anything like interesting, you know, Fidelirea, Optosos Spinosa, that kind of stuff, that'll actually be a, you know, a <laughs> relatively significant find. So that's cool. I don't know if you can hear it, but we are down here. There's a uh, creek going on there. I'm not pointing the right way. There's a creek, there's a nice bridge there that we drove in on. My car is back over there, you can see it. Um, but yeah, we're just looking around, flipping rocks, and uh, you know, normal anting vlog stuff. Around here, there's been a lot of Formica forelliana, which uh, I think has been featured in vlogs before. I'm actually looking at a worker right now. Let me go and show you. So here is one of our Formica forelliana workers. And uh, yeah, just all up in this area. It's just really cool. Like here, let me zoom out a little bit. Not that much. You can see this big old tree and just really pretty. Now we are gonna be camping here tonight and I'll show you our campground. It's not here. We're actually a bit higher elevation than our campground is. Um, but yeah, I will just keep you guys updated on everything that we find and, and um, stay tuned. Cause like I said, pretty much everything that we find here today is gonna be new for this mountain. So that's cool. So it's not an ant, but this guy is pretty cool. We got a nice click beetle here. So here, let me see if I can get him to, uh, to click. Oh no, he's actually walking around now. But that's a oh, pretty cool click beetle. Oh, stop running. Dang, he was just clicking a second ago when I first found him, but I guess he's, uh, he's used to me now. So yeah, cool little guy. Throw him back down there. And yeah, Peace. here, this is actually, I think, a new record for this mountain. Lyomatopa mapiculatum. What you say, it'd be too deep to dig for a queen? No, yeah, so these guys are actually really funny. Their colonies get well into the hundreds of thousands of workers. Yeah. And their nests are really difficult to locate because, like if you'll notice here, there's no brood here. Yeah, I know, they're all, that's a... And yeah, they really make deep. crazy satellite nests too. So like, I bet a lot of these other rocks in this area are gonna have workers of them under it. Maybe not everyone, yeah. but you'll probably see more of these guys in the same area. But that's cool, because um, I think the only other lion with topum documented here was Luctuosum, yeah. which is our less impressive species of the two. So, very cool to see those. So here I just found a massive colony of some Temnothorax rugatulis. These guys are some really pretty acorn ants. There's the queen, you can see she's really fat. Because, well, this is not all of them. There is a lot more down here. We got some elite pupae. This species is polygynous, but I don't think that this colony is. I might be wrong, but you see there's a worker there carrying some eggs. More of them. And that queen. I really like seeing these guys. They're super pretty. I don't really like keeping them. They're not all that interesting to uh, actually have in captivity, but they are pretty cool. I just found this massive fiddly colony, complete with a late brood. You can see. They're pretty cool, they got some nice majors. There's even more of them under the rock, of course. Wow. So these guys, um, I wanna say they're probably Crassicornis group. Um, I'm not probably gonna be able to ID them to species. Um, uh, Ansei Z is not with me here today, so we won't have his macro pictures to, uh, to ID with, but um, yeah, they're still pretty cool looking. And uh, even if I won't get to know exactly what species they are, glad I saw them. Oh, whoa. Oh, <laughs> another one of those scorpions. That's funny. A lot of those. Here, I'll, I'll video this guy first. Just a cool little scorpion. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. I just took a picture of it. I'll put it on iNaturalist for ID. But, um, and we're collecting some of this pupae because we've got um, Laceus aphidicola queens that need um, hosts. But we just found this big Laceus colony. There was a lot more pupae than this. Um, 
But then like they're under all these rocks. Like we've got, you know, tons of pupae here. And then over here is the same colony, presumably at least. And there's more pupae in here. And there was even some, I, I kind of reburied it. Um, but there was even some elate pupae. Yeah, you can see there's one. So just a really big laceous colony of um, presumably like something like Neoniger, Sicians, that, that group of laceous. Not sure exactly what species, but, but one of them like that. So cool. Just finished filming. Like there, that's the rock that had all the, the brood under it or that one. And then I, I come up here, like this is probably the same colony. We're 10 feet away. More. Look at all of them. All of this pupae. Oh yeah, and that's a, a weird, gross looking spider. <laughs> but yeah, rock is just covered in workers. Tons of pupae. Here's more elate pupae right here. You can just see how big those are. Elate larvae that haven't pupated yet. Just incredible. I mean, these, these claustral aces colonies get like disgustingly large. So I think that these formica are fighting because it doesn't look like they're going after prey. It looks like they're going after each other. Because I was wondering, I, you know, we just pulled up to a new spot. We're, we're high elevation, by the way. This is pine forest. I think we're over 8,000 feet right now. Um, because it is warm down low. So we're going to be there in a little, in a little bit, probably an hour or two as it's going to start cooling off, but they are definitely mad at something. This massive formica colony looks like just normal Fusca group, you know, some Podzolica or Subanacens like that, but it's crazy that we're so high in elevation that these guys are just barely starting to get larvae. Meanwhile, the lower elevation Formica species, like Nava Ferreliana, they're already getting new workers from this year. They've got pupae, those pupae are closing. So you can just tell how much the climate up here, the cooler climate stalls these guys' development. But they like it up here, so who knows? This is, I mean, clearly they're doing fine because that's a pretty, pretty large colony of them, so. So we are crazy high up right now, and you can just see out over everything. I mean, so I think, I'm, I'm, don't quote me on any of this, but I think that those mountains, like way in the distance, ones you can barely see, I'm pretty sure that those are the Chiricahuas. And then if you look, so we're facing due south right now. This way, I'm pretty sure that some of those mountains that are way over in the back are in New Mexico because we're pretty far east in Arizona. Pretty sure that those are all in New Mexico, or some of them at least. Like this this closer one probably isn't, but like way the hell back there, there's some that pretty sure you can see into New Mexico. And then just looking down over this, you can see there's this more pine forest below us and then the really low, lower elevation parts down there. So uh, pretty wild. This is a pretty, pretty good vista point, I think. I just flipped this like super flat, big rock on this massive Campanotus vicinus colony. These are very dark vicinus, but you can tell that they're not Modoc because they're too shiny. Oh, and yeah, you can actually see some of the red on them in the sunlight. At least I can in person. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera. But that is a lot of brood. So this is pretty cool find. Um, something that I definitely don't see every day is I actually found a termite queen in an established colony. Um, pretty sure that this is Nathotermes. Um, and I'm unsure if I got the king, but I'd, I'm pretty confident because as far as I know, they usually stick pretty close together. And I dug up the entire area around this queen. Um, I, I am collecting them, if you can tell. And the reason for that is that termites make for really amazing feeders for ants, especially Odontomachus. And my Odontomachus desertorum colony back home is going crazy. So if I can have readily available reproducing termites that I'm not going to have to wild catch every time, that's going to be huge for the ease of keeping a large Odontomachus colony. Um, so I'm very excited about this, not having to raise them from a solo queen, and I got this big huge bag that's just full of workers, and, and hopefully the king is in there. Um, if not, that would be a little unfortunate, but still, I mean, that's uh, really not something you see every day. Pretty excited about that. Yeah, so here, we got a big old Myrmica colony, like huge, look at all that brood, all these workers. I did not spot a queen. Um, oh, look at that one's bicolored. I have a distinct feeling this is Myrmica incompleta. 
or discontinua, but I'm not entirely sure. But, um, yeah, nice, nice high elevation ant, big colony of them. They're just cool to see. They're, they're nice and chunky looking. I don't know. I like them. So we've just stumbled on a massive Lyomatopum luctuosum trail. I, you can't see it probably, but it's coming all the way from up this tree. And there are workers. And this whole tree is just swarming with them. And they come down here and just all across here is just swarmed with Lyomatopum. Look at them. Big cluster here. What? Nice. And then they come up here, down in there, and then up this tree. So really they just come straight across from that tree and up into this tree. Very cool. I didn't even realize. I looked away for two seconds. So there's that trail. You can literally see it moving. They go up this tree and then they actually come back down over here. And it looks like both trails from up there and down here are going up into this tree. But this trail is even longer. Look at this. So they're down here. Trailing across this stick, across these rocks. Oh, here they're killing some stuff. They have uh, some kind of bee or, or fly there. And then another massive swarm of them here. It looks like they've got something that they're eating. Another swarm here. And then they just keep going. Like nothing ever happened. They just keep chugging along. All the way down. It looks like yeah, it keeps going over here. And then it keeps going over here. And it ends up on this tree. And it looks like they're just swarming up and down this tree. Wonder if they keep going after that at all. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it stops in this tree. But yeah, huge. So we've got that tree to that tree, and then this tree also to that tree. That is a big freaking trail from a big freaking light form and dark form right here. I actually haven't found the dark form here. Um, so I just found. Form? Well, the I queen thought, is the queen is dark, but if you look at the work, so was we just got. Found the dark form up. Campanotis St. Saint Sabinus. Uh, we found the dark form of Ocreatus, which is odd that it would be the light form of St. Sabinus here and the dark form okay. of Ocreatus. Yeah, my yeah, I just got is way bigger, huh? The queen. My queen's way bigger, I think. And yeah, look at all these guys. So we just found this desert blonde tarantula. It's not a, you know, unique species of tarantula, but it's probably one of the larger ones that I've seen in the wild. I'm going to put my hands there, but I don't want to get um, haired. I don't want it to shoot its hairs off at me. But figured I'd get that on the vlog. That is pretty cool. Big old, big old dude. Yeah, wow. That is a beautiful spider. I was just talking earlier about how tarantulas are basic, and I'm like yeah. swooning over this one. They are cool though when you come across them. Yes, yeah, I will admit that. See, I'm that usually, I usually cool. don't like them. That's awesome. So this is one of the biggest chromatogaster colonies that I've seen in at least a long time. Piles of eggs. You can see two queens down in the hole there. More eggs, more eggs, pupae, and then on the rock, queens, queens, queens. So, uh, yeah. Oh, there's even more queens over there. Probably some more down there. Just probably well over 15, 20 queens there. <laughs> just, ugh, crazy. So here, we just found a bunch of these Campanotis ocreatus foraging. I noticed this big major out. And then they have like three more workers that are like just bumming around there. And then there's two more down there. Like, I, I wonder that must be their nest entrance or something. They, they, they're they in this area. Oh yeah, there's more over there. Dang. So, uh, those are cool. And, and 
If you can tell, we are not only back at low elevation, but it is nighttime. So uh, we're gonna be looking for ants that are just foraging. Yeah, here's yet another Ocreatus worker. Uh, got a very active colony somewhere in the area. So that is pretty cool. No, honestly, I, I don't know. I just kept that other one just because. Yeah, so we got a pretty impressive rock here. There's this big Myrmica colony, like really substantial here. And then right next door, another huge Monomorium colony with a bunch of queens under here. You can see, I think there's like at least four in this pile here. No queen in the Myrmica that I could see, although it looks like they do have a late brood. There's one with a queen pupa. And some more over here. So, pretty impressive. Oh, and there's a Formica worker getting bodied on by Monomorium now. <laughs> Walked into the wrong spot at the wrong time. So if anyone's ever wondering why you don't mess with Lyomotopum, here you go. <laughs> this is, um, yeah. And this is Lactuosum too. So this is like the less intense species of the two in Arizona. So yeah, you just kind of think about that, and um, yeah, <laughs> they're uh, a little crazy. So yeah, we broke in a little more, and there are just even more eggs and larvae back there. Some on here, and they're just, I mean, they're so mad. This entire tree is swarming with lion with opum. This is so cool. Just look at that. That's awesome. So we're leaving. We, um, it's about noon. So we've been here for like 24 hours, pretty much exactly. I showed you some stuff that we found this first day. Um, there was a parasitic laceous flight this morning. I'll show you a picture of those here or one of the queens that I found. Um, don't know what species they are. Some Cthonal Laceus, probably. So I'm just working on taking the tent down now. We're gonna stop for some lunch on the way home. And that's gonna be about it. So, um, hope you enjoyed this dancing vlog. It was very different, um, personally, just because I've never been here before. I think this might be the first, um, dancing vlog that I've done where it's a place that I've never been to. So that's cool. Um, and like I said at the beginning, I think I said that, there's like no ants documented here. So we got to document a lot of species for this this mountain range. So it was pretty exciting. Um, it wasn't like the most amazing finds ever, um, but it wasn't bad. We got some cool stuff. We got some parasitic laces coins that I'm excited about. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, again, if you want to support this series directly, go on arthropodantics.com. Get yourself some high quality formicaria. Um, just your purchases there help fund these trips. So, you know, head on over there, check our check our stuff out if you are interested. And yeah, thanks for watching.